Good morning and welcome to your Farm and Home Show. My name is Joanna Coles and this morning we're visiting with Dr. Morgan Hayes. She's with the University of Kentucky. He's an ag engineer there. Good morning, Morgan. Good morning. Well, I'm glad you're here today because we're going to talk about fencing and more specifically electric fencing. And a lot of people have that, but we can always make improvements and get tips. Absolutely. And, and the most common area where people have issues with electric fencing is when their animals get out. Uh, and when we find that animals are getting out, it's typically because we're not getting a good charge on our electric fence. And it's not shocking the animal the way it's supposed to, to create the psychological barrier we're aiming for. Uh, and when we find that we have these errors, the most common error that we find is in our grounding system. So uh, electric fencing, just as a reminder, it's really a system. So it includes both the wire that is what most people see, uh, the energizer, the charger that we're using to create the shock, uh, and then the grounding system is another important component. And the grounding system is essentially the antenna for that whole fence that allows that charge that's going out on that wire to circulate back to the energizer or the controller of the system. Uh, and we need a good grounding system in order for that to occur. And there are some pretty important design criteria to make that work. The first being that, that we have three ground rods, 10 feet apart and six feet into the ground. What we're essentially doing is creating enough surface area on those ground rods to catch any of that current that's coming back on that circuit uh, that that animal is creating by hitting that fence. And so if people don't currently have that, that's something that they can they can add to their system, though, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Anytime you set up a, a electric fence system, um, you're going to start with some form of a grounding. You have to somehow connect a ground wire somewhere. Um, but the first thing we want to do if we're finding that we're not shocking the animals the way we intend to and we are getting voltage on our wire is we're going to want to add those three ground rods. And we want those three ground rods to also be galvanized. Uh, a lot of people will try and use old rebar or old T-posts, uh, or even they'll go to uh, their home improvement store and buy copper ground rods, which are designed for a house grounding system. Uh, and what we really want is galvanized ground rods and galvanized wire on this system, because that's going to allow a continuity of wire. And we're never going to get rusting in that system like we would if we add copper in. It causes a lot of oxidation and reactions that break down that wire and reduce the uh, effectiveness of carrying current. Another tip would be to avoid setting up our grounding system next to another grounding system. Uh, the cheapest boxes we buy are the ones that plug into a 120 outlet, you know, a regular wall plug in our house or on our, our garages or on our barns. But we want to be careful that we don't set this grounding system up right next to the grounding system that's on that house or garage or barn. Uh, so if there's a copper ground rod next to a panel, we don't want to put our ground rods immediately adjacent to it. We want at least 50 feet between the two grounding systems. Uh, one other thing that's worth uh, noting is that a lot of times um, people keep those areas where those ground rods are cleaned up with a weed eater. Uh, which is a great idea, uh, but it is worth noting that when we do that, we have the risk of cutting that wire and we need continuity in that wire. So we want to make sure to check it every year, especially now in the spring. It's a great time to do it when all the ground pressure is, is down. Um, and one other note is there's proper connectors for a ground rod. So after we drive the ground rod into the, the ground, it has a little bit of a, a, a mark on the head from where we've had to knock it into the ground. Uh, but we can actually put a clamp just below that, uh, that we can run our wires through to attach it to the ground rod. Um, and there are some commercially available ones that we can pick up at our home improvement stores. There's two styles that are very common and both will work. We just want to make sure we run one continuous wire through all three ground rods uh, using those clamps to make sure we get a good connection so that the that charge can actually travel back the way it needs to. If people are wanting more information, where would you direct them? Yeah, we have some really nice resources, some, some educational things. We have fencing schools. We actually have one coming up uh, in Allen County, not too far away. Um, here in April, April 11th, I believe. If you have questions, be sure to contact your local extension office. We'd be happy to help. Thanks for watching and have a great day.